Hello everyone. This is the last episode before the Last Supper, so we're entering the endgame of Holy Week. Today we start in Matthew chapter 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. The purpose this has for us isn't to figure out when this will happen, but why there is a separation. And Jesus gives the exact answer. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? You will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for the one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. What Jesus wants us to know here is that only faith can save us, but our faith is only real if our works show it. So no, works don't get you into heaven per se, but they kind of do, because if you don't feed people, clothe them, and help them some way, then your faith is not real. Jesus was a good example of good faith. He didn't just preach, he visited with people and helped them, and he definitely fed people through ways that we might not be able to, but he was still a good example. And as the rest of the Gospels and Bible have conveyed, it's not a numbers game, and just because you had a moment where you were selfish doesn't mean you were going to hell. If you could have given the homeless person cash and didn't, or if some people were stuck at the side of the road and you didn't stop to help them, you're not going to hell. But if at all possible, we need to help others no matter what it costs us. And if you're wondering why this is the reason we are the righteous, I think it's simply because it's the hardest thing to do. I believe that the most natural thing and most easiest thing a human can do is be selfish. So therefore, the most strongest and most powerful people on earth are the ones that help others. Don't get me wrong, please be humble about it, but the most difficult thing in the world to do is to help someone. So if you are a helpful person, then you are very strong indeed. Especially since Jesus is mostly talking about the least of these here. People with autism, the homeless, 100-year-olds, people like that are not always fun to be around. It takes a real person to hang out with those people. Because Jesus isn't talking about your best friend. He's talking about the weirdos, the awkward, and the senile. If you invite those to dinner, or even just hang out with them, then that is the definition of righteous in God's eyes. So remember this in your day-to-day. -day. Thank you.